Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we will be looking at chapter four from the ICT IGCC course. Uh, chapter four is networks and the effects of using them. We're now looking at the second part, 4.2, network issues and communication. And we're going to be starting off with security protocols. Uh, we're going to be looking at secure socket layer. So what is this? So this is basically a protocol uh, or set rules used by computers to communicate with each other over a network and allows data to be sent and received securely across the network. So what uh, the secure socket layer will do is any data that's sent or received is encrypted. If that data was to be intercepted or can't be understood by the third party. Okay, so an example of a website that uses a secure socket layer could be um, Amazon. So you can see we can see the protocol here, HTTPS. And if I click here, you can see the connection is secure. And what does that mean? Um, your information, for example, passwords or credit card numbers is private when it's sent to this website. Okay, so secure websites encrypt information before sending it to others. Okay, it'll keep private and confidential any data. And only the computer on the other end can read and understand the data. So if the data was intercepted, it can't be understood. Okay, so websites that depend on security can have their websites also reviewed and validated by companies called certificates authorities. And these reviews will ensure the website is secure. So what are the features of a web page that identify it as using a secure server? So you will notice, again, um, we discussed this, the S, um, the S will show after the HTTP in a URL address. So if you go back to the Amazon website, you can see the HTTPS protocol is shown. And this will indicate that we are going to be using the secure server. Any data that's been sent to received will be uh, in encrypted. Um, you may also see a padlock uh, in some browser windows to show users the web page is secure. And sometimes the company name will be shown in the address bar in a green color. And this is, again, once it's been validated by the security authorities as being secure. So sometimes online banking websites, uh, the name may appear green. Okay, so now what we're going to be looking at is methods of authentication. So typically, when you are logging onto your computer or onto a network, we need to use a username and a password. Okay, so that's the most obvious way we can access a computer system. So let's have a look at um, the disadvantages of using passwords and what we can do to avoid passwords from being intercepted. Okay, so the disadvantage of using a password, it could be, it could be easily guessed, especially if it's quite straightforward and simple. Um, it could be, for example, if someone's using their, the name of their pet or maybe their birth date, you know, it could be quite easy to work that out. Passwords could be seen by others whilst you were typing them in. Uh, passwords can be stolen and then used and passed on to other people. Spyware software could be used to log the keys which have been pressed when you are entering your password. Then this data can be sent to a third party to obtain sensitive details. And your password can be hacked by using a password generating software. So what can we do to avoid your password from being intercepted? Um, we need to make sure we're using a strong password, which includes multiple characters, uh, such as letters and numbers or special characters. You need to also make sure your password is regularly changed. So if you keep using the same password, then it's more likely for it to be guessed. Try avoiding using the same password for all of your accounts, because if one of your account gets hacked, then obviously the hackers can gain access to your other accounts and install spyware software, which will block uh, the installation of any um, key logging software. So if you have spyware software on your computer uh, or anti-spyware software on your computer, uh, key logging software will not be able to install itself. It should be blocked. So what are some criteria for strong passwords? So use at least a minimum of eight characters, include letters, numbers, maybe special characters. It could be a question mark or underscore. Avoid using names or words which could be easily be guessed and use upper and lowercase letters. So now what we're going to be doing is looking at some um, exam questions. 
So let's look at this exam question here. According to research carried out on passwords, the top three most used passwords are 12345, QWERTY, and Sunshine. So these are the basically one, two, three, the six letters at the top of your keyboard. Describe using examples the difference between a weak password and a strong password. So where you can see the pink, purple highlights, we're talking about weak passwords, and then green refers to a strong password. So weak passwords are easy to guess. A weak password may only contain letters or all digits only, not a combination. An example of a weak password could be Apple. Now, a strong password usually contains at least eight characters, which includes letters, digits, and special characters. A strong password would also make use of a lower and uppercase letters. An example of a strong password is, um, we could have uppercase A, lowercase p and p, underscore 135, uh, underscore LLE, and then question mark. So we've used a number of different characters, um, upper and lowercase letters, and also special characters as well. Right, we also have other methods of authentication, and one um, problem method now being used more so is biometrics. Uh, think about your mobile phone. So a lot of people are using their fingerprints to log into their phones rather than entering a pin or a pattern. Um, also, some people are using it, using it with their laptops as well. So biometrics are unique to the individual. And here are some examples of where we may use biometrics. So fingerprint scans. So users will have uh, users will have to press their finger against the scanner. Fingerprints are then compared against stored um, values in a database. So with biometrics, the user with the biometrics has to be present in order to access the system because the biometrics are, are unique to them. With a password, if someone guesses your password, you don't need to be there. Someone else can type it in on your behalf to gain access to a system. So the advantage of using fingerprints is quite straightforward to use. It's really uh, accurate and only small storage requ requirements are required for biometric data. Disadvantage would be if your skin is damaged and it may be more difficult for the reader to read and recognize the fingerprint. And we also have a retina iris recognition. So scans use infrared light to scan unique patterns of blood vessels in the retina. Uh, it's very um, high accuracy. Uh, it's no way to replicate a user's retina. Um, it may be expensive to set up, uh, could be very intrusive. Um, it takes a while to scan, so you'd have to be quite close up to the machine for your retina to be scanned. Now, the facial recognition could be scanned from a distance, um, so physical features are scanned and compared to the information held in the database. So Bix is from a distance, not as, as intrusive. Um, it's a little bit cheaper technology. However, your physical features can change over time with age, and also maybe you may wear a hat or a mask or glasses, and that could stop your face from being recognized. And voice recognition, so some online banking websites are using voice recognition to authenticate a user. So users will use speak, which will compare the voice held on a database. Um, users will use speak. No, that makes no, no sense. Users with ten, we, will, will say something, and whatever they say will be stored against what's been held um, on a database. And Again, it's not as intrusive, um, it's cheap technology, and the verification is very quick. Um, however, the accuracy may not be as great as the other methods of biometrics. And if you're not feeling well, your voice could be affected. Um, so if you have a sore throat, for example, you may not sound like yourself, then you may not be able to log in to your account. So here, we're going to be looking at some more exam questions. Arjun can log directly into his office system from his home computer. The office system only requires users to enter their user ID and password. So explain why this is not very secure. The user ID and password can sometimes be easily guessed. Passwords may be seen when typed in. Key login software could also hack passwords. Describe two other ways the office system could identify the user securely, so biometrics could be used, so using a biometric scanner to capture digital images of the fingerprints. And then biometrics is unique and impossible to forge. 
Also, um, a one-time code could be sent um, to your phone, for example, and Argent is provided with a one-time code, and then the code is entered into the system. The code can only be used once and has um, a time limit. So typically when you're using these one-time codes it would be when you're making a payment online and sometimes to verify the payments, you will get a code sent to your phone and then you'd have to enter that code onto the website within a time limit to authenticate that payment. So give three examples of biometric uh, data. So you can talk about fingerprints um, or handprints, the retina or iris, or speech uh, voice. You can also say uh, facial recognition as well. Right, so that moves on to this question, which is about facial uh, recognition systems. There has been a major issue regarding the accuracy of facial recognition systems for identifying suspects by the police. Tawara Airport has installed biometric security, including facial recognition systems to help police recognize non-criminals entering and leaving the country. Previously, a video was taken of all passengers and then checked manually. So what we have is an automatic system where passengers are coming into terminals, into airports, and faces are being scanned. And if a known criminal has entered the premises, then that would be logged onto the system by checking their facial, uh, um, yeah, by basically scanning in their face so discuss the effective effectiveness of using facial recognition systems rather than the manual system to increase security in this way. So with the facial recognition um, can uniquely identify individuals. Faces can be identified by electronic comparisons, therefore relative higher level of accuracy. However, uh, systems can work. So actually systems can also work continuously so we have a few advantages here. So automatically the faces can be compared to um, ex example faces on the database. There's a higher level of accuracy. The system works continuously, but a human checker would have to take breaks. Faces can also be compared to older images. However, it is hard to set up a facial recognition system. It would take a long time to add new people to the system and facial recognition may not work if people wear masks, glasses, or have facial hair. Also, it would be uh, intrusive for some people as personal details have been stored onto a database. So not as intrusive as, you know, um, scanning your eyes, you know, quite closely to the scanner, but still some people may not like their details to be stored on a database. Right, let's have a look at some more exam questions. So as our so as our use of the cloud increases, new ways of accessing it safely needs to be developed. So the use of typed passwords is being replaced by biometric methods. Discuss the benefits and drawbacks of using biometric uh, methods. So biometric methods are more secure as it uses unique data. It is more difficult to copy forge. It is faster way of accessing systems. Um, also, the user cannot forget biometric data. The user must also be physically at a device to access it. However, it would be expensive to set up. It would also be difficult to get biometric data for all users. Some users may uh, see using biometrics as an invasion of their privacy and face coverings or, or any other changes could prevent the system from working. And Let's keep looking at other methods of authentication. So think about the use of uh, magnetic uh, swipe cards. Maybe you want to gain access to a hotel room or a gym membership. Um, swipe cards are used to gain access to a system by swiping a card into the reader. Uh, could be used to gain access to a room. So we talked about a hotel example. Advantage of using a swipe card, they're quite easy to use and update, uh, quite robust. If you drop it, it's not going to break. Could become unreadable over a period of time. Sometimes if you have your swipe card next to your phone in your pocket, it may stop it from reading the data. Um, zero login. So devices and applications being smart enough to recognize a particular user without requiring any passwords or codes. Or codes. So this is great because there's no need to remember any usernames or passwords. However, the incorrect person could log on to your apps. Okay. And smart cards 
These can be used to make payments for transport systems or in a canteen. So these can be topped up, okay, even a metro lines. So again, the advantage of this, this will authenticate you to the system. Uh, it's less need to carry physical cash. Um, however, you may not know the amount you have on the card. Uh, the great thing about metro systems um, here in the UAE, for example, is when you log out, um, so if you're going through a system and you tap the card on the way out and also in other places, um, it will tell you what's uh, remaining on the balance. So then you know for next time if you need to increase the allowance, the balance on your card or not. Um, you also have these uh, methods as well, two-factor authentication. So the two-factor authentication involves a user typing in their password and then a code will also have to be entered. So the code is normally sent to the registered phone. So if someone's gained access to your username and password, but they don't have your phone, then they can't access the system. If an unauthorized attempt is made to log into an account, then a text message will be sent to the user to alert them. And then they can obviously make steps to block the account or that particular password. Uh, tokens, a security token is a physical device that users must possess to access the system. And this can be this can include a smart card, a universal uh, serial bus key, a mobile device, or radio frequency identification card. So you would need this device to be able to access the system. So you'd have to have it with you. Okay. Um, so we're going to be looking now at a question about um, smart cards. An electronic bus system is being considered for New Delhi. Passengers will use smart cards to travel on the bus they will have to add money to their smart card before they can travel. So compare and contrast the use of smart cards rather than using cash to pay for a journey. So smart cards and cash can be both used for transactions. They are both also portable. However, with cash, the correct payment amount needs to be checked. Sometimes with the card, you may not realize that, you're, that you don't have enough um, balance or money until you want to travel. The processing is much faster when using a card. The card can be blocked if lost or stolen. Um, also, no physical cash is required, so less chance of stealing. Okay, this next part, um, what is a computer virus? I'm going to talk about in the next video. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, computer viruses and we'll continue to look at some exam questions and then uh, video conferencing, audio conferencing, web conferencing and so on. So please join me in the next video. Uh, please drop your comments below um, for this video. Like and share. And please help my channel, guys. Subscribe again. And please share with your friends. Thank you. Bye-bye.